heroes of the Civil War, who was Jubal Anderson Early? Jubal Anderson Early was an American lawyer, politician, and military officer who served in the Confederate States Army during the American Civil War. Trained at the United States Military Academy, Early resigned his United States Army commission after the Second Seminole War and his Virginia Military Commission after the Mexican-American War, in both cases to practice law and participate in politics. Accepting a Virginia and later Confederate military commission as the American Civil War began, Early fought in the Eastern Theater throughout the conflict. He commanded a division under Generals Stonewall Jackson and Richard S. Ewell, and later commanded a, a corps. Prior to the Civil War, he was passionately opposed to secession and even voted against it, but later accepted orders as colonel of the 24th Virginia Infantry. Following his infantry performance at First Manassas, Early was promoted to Brigadier General. He fought in most of the major battles in the Eastern Theater, including the Seven Days Battle, Second Bull Run, Antietam, Fredericksburg, and Chancellorsville. He received promotion to Major General on January 17, 1863. Early service was important during the Salem Church and Gettysburg campaigns. At the Battle of the Wilderness, Early briefly commanded the Corps of A.P. Hill and received a promotion to Lieutenant General on May 31, 1864. The sounding of the officer's call means it's time for this week's book review. This week, we look at Lieutenant General Jubal Anderson Early, CSA, Autobiographical Sketch and Narrative of the War Between the States. Now that's a long title. Autobiographical Sketch and Narrative of the War Between the States begins with Early's account of his attempt to interrupt Virginia's efforts to secede, his failure in that endeavor, and his decision to join the Confederate Army. Early then describes his military experiences, the typical lives of soldiers, his responsibilities as colonel, and several early military engagements. The final chapter includes a letter from General Robert E. Lee and the editor's summary of Early's life after the war ended in 1865. Early's autobiographical sketch and other writings proved to play a very important historical role. In fact, in American National Biography, Gary Gallagher asserts, No person, North or South, did more to influence 19th century history of the Civil War. While it is always good to read opposing views and keep an open mind about our past, this autobiography, in my opinion, leans a little too far to the left. It is a great review of the trials and tribulations of the Confederate efforts to fight a hopeless war, but his skewed views on the leadership tilts the book a little too much. Mad Hattle gives this book a recommended rating. Just read it with an open mind. He also served during the battles of Spotsylvania Courthouse, as well as Cold Harbor, where he replaced Ewell. Early took command of the 2nd Corps after General Ewell's temporary retirement, where he proved victorious over Union General Hunter in the Shenandoah Valley and Wallace at Monarchy. Early stood before the gates of Washington on July 11, 1864, but the arrival of Union reinforcements prevented Early from attacking the Union capital. The rest of 1864, however, would not end as well as it started. In September of that year, he was defeated by Sheridan at Winchester and Fisher's Hill. Although he tried one final surprise attack against Sheridan at the Battle of Cedar Creek, his men were repelled. His command was dispersed by General Custer in March of 1865 in Waynesboro, Virginia. Early, or old Jube to his men, fled to Mexico in disguise after the war, but later returned at the end of his life. Early was laid to rest in Lynchburg, Virginia in March of 1894. It's your history. Learn it. Know it. Love it. <laughs> 